Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the training course on unsteady heat transfer equation. We already started discussion about BTCS process, BTCS scheme that is backward time central space. This is a discretization scheme to solve unsteady heat transfer equation. Let me just quickly recap what we have discussed in the last video. I will also put the link in the description box so that you can go through the video before you start coding in this video. So if you remember we had four points out of those four points the past time point that is shown in the green line that was known value and these three points were unknown and we were setting up an equation for all the grid points. If I quickly uh, come here I was just mentioning like this particular set the blue point is indicated by those values the red point indicates these values and similarly the other two colors indicate those particular temperature suppose for this particular one that is 2 1 of which one is yeah 1 2 this is 1 so the blue point is T 2 1 so we are basically uh, setting a relation between this blue point and these other three colors. So the equation was coming to be say this one 3 2 indicated by this point it has T2 2, T2 2, 2 and T12. So we had set up those kind of relations and then we actually showed if we just hover through it we'll keep on getting different different algebraic equations. So the relationship at every grid points is giving us a particular differential, particular algebraic equation. Now we know those boundary point values already like right hand and left hand boundary points. We also know the initial temperature here. So we were intended to calculate the temperature at those grid points shaded by this region. So uh, this particular shaded region had 7 by 7 matrix so it has 7 by 7 equations when you just hover through all the points you will get you will be getting 7 by 7 that is 49 equations and I have only shown for one linear one line here that is all these points I have shown and then what I talked about is this particular set of equations will lead to a matrix that is a tri-diagonal matrix you can see in the, this is diagonally dominant so all the elements in this diagonal has similar value 1 plus 2r and also it has other two adjacent diagonals which has minus r value you know what is r if you don't know just uh, go through the previous video it will be helpful now today uh, we will be right away going to code it and let us uh, see how exactly we can do that. So the main idea was we had a set of algebraic equations which were represented by this particular system where a t j plus 1 j plus 1 means at an elevated time step is a t j plus 1 is equal to t j plus bj where bj are the constant values those are again coming from the boundary condition values and tj is at a time step say t then j plus 1 is at a time step t plus delta t. So now we are basically solving this particular equation that is the first order time derivative is equal to alpha times second order space derivative in one dimension that's why we only have x x and it is we need to solve it subject to these two boundary conditions those are left hand side we kept at zero temperature also the right hand side and initially at every spatial points the temperature was following this particular algebraic relation so that thing we have already talked about now in order to solve it we need to import few libraries and those libraries are uh, numpy as np you know uh, if we are dealing with any matrices in python we need to import 
uh, numpy as np that is the short form and from shypy we are importing uh, sparse and this is uh, this has to be uh, this has a relation with the diagonal matrix i'll show uh, it in some other video that means what is the utility of using this uh, particular sparse one that will show you in some python video and i will also put those link in the description box so that you can learn later but briefly this sparse will be used to uh, define the tri diagonal matrix basically when you have a matrix where there are multiple zeros in the matrix that means most of the places are zero then those can be actually defined by this particular sparse function and that's why we are importing it and other things are related to plotting so this is uh, importing uh, 3d so we are basically uh, we will be plotting it in 3d that's why axis 3d we are importing we are importing pyplot as plt this is the basic thing for the plotting and we are also importing cm that is the color map we need to show you the color that is the higher temperature will be shown by a deeper color uh, intense color or the lower temperature will be shown by a lighter color so that is the objective now let us start coding it so the first thing is we have to set the number of grid points so what we can do is we can actually set number of number of grid points you can just code it with me so that it gives you the ultimate feeling uh, we I could have shown you the code and explain but that does not help that's why I am coding so that you can also code with me suppose we are taking uh, 50 points uh, this 50 points are say grid points along spatial direction spatial direction means along x you can also write along x so you can write along x now we will be taking number of grids in the time direction as well say that is given by n say n equal to 60 so this is your grid points along time direction okay so we have defined the grid points let us define the x0 that is the starting value of the uh, solution space so if you just see this thing so i showed you so this kind of we are basically working on this kind of system where this is the left hand end and this is the right hand end and there are multiple points at this linear space so we are creating this particular space say left hand coordinate of left hand is zero and say the coordinate xl that means the last value say one so we are uh, we, we have a solution space of one say one centimeter here now what we need to do we need to discretize for the time step so this is the minimum and maximum value for the space so let us write it defining space so this part is defining space now we will be defining time say we will be defining time defining time so the t0 the initial time say 0 uh, you can write it here so this is initial time so tf we can actually keep it 1 or let us keep it 0.2 because there should be some effective r value so i just uh, write it final time now let us define the time step and spatial step so spatial step we can a uh, step we can define here itself so dx we define each step delta x or dx here so it would be how much xl minus x0 by number of grid points how many grid points we have actually number of grid points minus 1 
y minus 1 uh, I have discussed many times I will again discuss it so it will be m minus 1 so basically if you go to here y m minus 1 I will tell you suppose the, here how many points we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so in this green box we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so here how many boxes we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 so if you have 7 points that is giving you 5 boxes or 5 segments that means sorry that is giving you 6 segments but we have 7 points so number of boxes are 1 less than number of grid points and that is why it will be m minus 1 similarly my dt would be tf minus t0 by number of grid points minus 1 that is n minus 1 capital n minus 1 so we have defined our dt we have defined our dx now let us define alpha because in the equation we have a parameter alpha say the alpha value is 1.7 now let us define r so we know that r was dt into alpha by dx square so what we can write double star means square okay that was r so we have defined r we have defined this is thermal diffusivity we can write it here this is thermal diffusivity this is r that we have actually we we know that uh, this is delta t alpha y dx square now let us create the grids how we will be creating the grid in python or in uh, matlab also we have a lin space function we will be using that lin space for creating the grid say we uh, name it x span x span is equal to np dot np stands for that numpy np dot lin space so we want to make a i mean from x0 to xl and we want m number of grids and that's why m i'll show you by by printing all those things i can show you how exactly it is happening then i define t span so t span will be again np dot lin space so it would be your t0 it will start from t0 it will end at tf and it will have again n number of points so now what I can do is let me just run the initial imports so you can click here so it will take some time so this is Google collaboratory you can if you have a Gmail account then you can directly use that this is very easy and that's why I am utilizing this Google collaboratory so initially it takes some time for connecting to the cloud once it is connected you will be uh, given with some ram and disk space and that is randomly given you can see if you hover here you can see those values are changing but uh, you, you don't have to do anything with this okay so this is done now i run this cell this is also done now let us print those x span and t span so that you can realize how we have created the grid so let us print x span so you can actually see if you write x span and so this has created this grid points so it has started from 0 you can see it is equispace then 0 0.02 0 0.04 0 0.06 0 0.08 so from 0 to 1 you have divided it into this m number of points now similarly if you write t span you will get 
similar from 0 to 0 0.2 it will be divided into 60 values you can see 0 to 0 0.2 it has divided into 60 and all are equispace so we have basically created the grid if you can visualize it we have basically created these grid points by this x span and t span we have basically created this horizontal and vertical grids so you have to visualize it if you want to code it appropriately then uh, what we have to do we have to create this matrix so if you look at the matrix again it was a tri diagonal matrix so let me just show you once again so this is how the matrix was so in my code we have to create those three diagonals somehow and then we have to put it in the matrix a so how exactly uh, that can be done so let me create the main diagonal that is 1 plus 2 r so i name it main diagonal or diag main diag is equal to it was 1 plus 2 into r 2 into r so that was the into np dot once so i want to multiply it by once that's why np dot once and it has to span from 1 to m minus 2 why it is so i will just print it so that your visualization will be better so before that let me create the off diagonal off diagonal mean the other two diagonal if you remember the matrix it had three diagonals so one was the 1 plus 2 r and adjacent adjacent to it you had minus r times the diagonal so minus r again we write np dot once so here it will be from 1 to m minus 3 i will tell you why it is 1 to m minus 3 so for that so m minus 2 let me go here once again and let me just show you if you just calculate how many diagonals you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and here 1 2 3 4 5 6 so here this is 1 less than the middle one so similarly here in the code also you see this is 1 less than this is 2 less than why 2 less than because the corner points were known the corner points are coming from the boundary conditions that's why two boundary conditions are there that is why m minus 2 and this is again less by 1 that's why m minus 3 so let us uh, run it and let me plot it so that you can realize so if you just write main diagonal main diag and run it then you'll see how exactly you created the diagonal so this is basically 1 plus 2 are everywhere so you can see all the values are same and these values are nothing but 1 plus 2 r let me just show you what is 1 plus 2 r 1 plus 2 into r so 1 plus 2 r will be the same value 28 point something so you can see this is 1 plus 2 r so we have basically created 1 plus 2 r in the main diagonal now let me show you the off diagonal so we paste it here we run the box so this is the off diagonal so this off diagonal will be equal to minus r so you can just see minus 13 minus r will also be minus 13 so we have basically created the, the all the three diagonals now the diagonals are created individually now we need to put it in a single matrix so how that can be done so we take another so we can actually place it down yeah so let us create the a matrix a equal to main diag initially let us create the length then it will be easier main diag dot shape one so we are if you write it it will give you the shape that is the how many points are there there are 48 points now what we need to do we need to create diagonals 
like this so total diagonals is equal to in a matrix we will have main diag we will have then off diag and off diag OFF diag and OFF diag so this is done then we need to create the matrix A that means, that means uh, here we have actually created the I mean number of terms that is 48 here we have created the diagonals if I plot it you can show diagonals uh, it will be uh, long so these are the diagonals only diagonal values now I need to create the entire matrix and that can be done by A equal to sparse so here we utilize the sparse I talked about it at the very beginning so this is the utility of taking that so diags within bracket we will have diagonals so the diagonals which we have created then we have 0 comma 1 minus 1 comma 1 so I'll show you why exactly this is being used then we need to write shape AA because this is a square matrix so we write it that shape is equal to A comma A now A is number of points I have shown that is coming 48 and after all we need to write T2 array so we are basically rearranging it so how exactly this sparse function works I will create another python video on it it will be helpful otherwise we will be diverted the will divert the topic otherwise so you can see now this is basically the tri diagonal matrix so we have created the tri diagonal matrix so now what is the thing we need to do we now we need to actually define the boundary conditions because we have not defined all the boundary conditions yet so what I need to do is say t equal to np dot zeros because the boundary conditions are zeros at left and right so np dot zeros initially we put m comma n initializing the matrix basically initially then we will be defining the boundary conditions so this is the entire matrix uh, initially we are keeping all zero then let us put the initial condition so t so for all comma 0 so our equation was 4x if you remember so 4 here x means x1 4x1 minus 4 into x1 whole square so how to write that x1 double star 2 square means double star 2 so this is the initial condition so let me just uh, comment it so that you can remember it better so this is I'll share this code with, in the description box so this is basically uh, initiate uh, keeping zeros to the matrix now this is your initial condition this is your initial condition now we need to define the boundary conditions so there are two boundary conditions so t the first is in the left so 0 comma all values in the left all values are 0 so it will be equal to 0 then uh, another boundary condition that is in the right hand side so right hand side means it is minus 1 I have mentioned these things in my python tutorial you can have a look into this so when I write minus it starts from the other end so those are two boundary conditions so let us comment it so this is left boundary condition and this is your right boundary condition so we have defined these two boundary conditions and we have defined the initial 
conditions as well okay there is an error let's see what's the error oh okay let me check okay there is a syntax issue we need to put another parenthesis here it should work now yeah it is done so we have defined the initial condition and two boundary conditions now we have to run the uh, loop to solve this particular matrix so that for that what i need to do for that we need to run a for loop say for say an index k in range which range we need to go so 1 to n we need to go from 1 to n n is the number of time steps if you remember then we need to say we need to define c is equal to let me just write it and then i will tell you np dot zeros m minus 4 i'll explain everything m minus 4 comma 1 dot i'll explain those details in other associated videos i'm defining b1 so those things are defining the matrix np dot as array So within bracket we need to write within parentheses r into t 0 to k then we have the other one r into e t minus 1 to k that is from the other end So B1 is defined. Now we need to define B2. So when I just print it, you will understand what exactly I am doing. And I will be making associated videos on this so that you understand the coding better. But here let me just rearrange. So B1, C. So B2. So we have defined C. We have defined okay B1. We need to re modify this B1 from np dot insert B1 okay 1 comma C. So in the B2, we put np dot insert B1 on comma C. In the B2, it would be a different uh, sorry it would be np dot in np dot array again we need to define an array minus one a minus one then sum it up b would be equal to b1 plus b2 then we define t for 1 up to m minus 1 with an interval of k np dot those are very important this l i n a l g this function is very important i will make basically we are solving the matrix solve a comma b so the main thing is i uh, i have written many things but what i have done actually i have actually if you see this b vector i have created i have created the a vector i am i am and i am basically solving this set of algebraic equations so if i just click here i hope there are some error let me just modify 
okay uh, i have defined it by temperature uh, it is not u it is t i hope this resolves the issue still there are some issue what is the error let me check b and opponents uh, could not be okay one is coming 47 another is 40 there is a mismatch of number okay there was a dimension issue i have rectified it so this is basically the right hand vector as per the ppt right side vector and here we are basically solving the set of equations so now let me run it yeah it's okay so finally yeah i have actually written all the codes related to plotting this particular temperature for after solving it so here i have created a mesh grid you can see xy mesh grid i have created that is having the t span and x span we have created a figure and then we have actually uh, make a code for commanding for the surface plot and then color bar and everything we have set and once you run it you can see the temperature profile so in this direction it shows the time increment so this is the zero time you can see at zero time at both the ends the temperature was zero this is the space zero this is space one so at both the corner it was one and the profile was like this at as i i was indicating in the powerpoint if you remember this is how the temperature initially was and from here also you can see this is how the temperature was as the time progresses uh, the heat from this point keep on transferring from both the ends and that's why it keeps on going to the equilibrium you can see and at a longer time it the temperature distribution becomes like this so the heat is being flown from the middle part to both the ends so this is the way we can actually code btcs so i will just save it as btcs say pioneer of success pos i will save this code and i will share for your reference uh, today i stop here if those videos are helpful kindly subscribe to our channel and share those videos and codes with your peers